Dear eyes, good night. In golden light, the stars around you gleam. On you I press with soft caress a little lovely dream. Rural Bengal, lush, green, eternal. The paddy sways in the breeze, flowers bloom in unknown little ponds. And there is the loamy smell of rain on dry earth. The household chores are over. Women stitch dreams on humble bits of cloth. They stitch myths and legends, poetry and love stories. Their needles talk a special language, the language of Katha, spoken with a simple running stitch. The woman in Bengal is an integral part of rituals and ceremonies. And she rope walks, juggles, and carries an unlimited variety of images in her mind from everyday life. Nothing stifles her creativity, her ability to group symbols together to tell endearing tales, as she sees beauty in her immediate surroundings. With nimble fingers, the needle her brush and the thread her easel, she transforms each piece of fabric into an object doll. The katha was originally used as quilts for babies. Old saris and dhotis were stitched together to make cuddly pads, but aesthetics was never lost. Even now, her roving imagination guides her nimble fingers. And some themes are from age-old epics, like the Ramayana and Krishna stories. Once upon a time, in Ayodhya, there lived King Dasharat with his queens and four sons, Ram, Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrukhan. Ram married Sita, but his stepmother was very unhappy. She banished him from the kingdom. He went away along with Sita and his brother Lakshman 
and lived in a forest. Ravan, the ten-headed demon king of Lanka, sent an enchanted deer to the woods. Sita was keen to keep it as a pet. And as Ram and Lakshman went chasing it, Ravan took her away by force to his kingdom. Hanuman, the monkey god, helped Ram to find his wife. He helped to wage a mighty battle. He even flew a mountain in. A magic mountain that had life-giving herbs for those wounded in war. Ram finally saved his wife. Goodness dominated over evil and he returned to Ayodhya victorious at last. Rather than gods and goddesses, women invoked them through their vahanas or carriers and gave Katha motives terrific elan. On the banks of the Jamuna today, little Nandalal went to play. So the gopis nearby came to see who was this little boy all on his own making sweet music as he sat alone. They walked from the fields full of curiosity and when they came to the river bank, what did they see? A wonderful sight, a luminous light shone through the clouds and fell on the boy who was playing on his little flute a song of joy. His blue-black skin was aglow in this weather and poised in his curls was a lone peacock feather. And the gopis went down on bended knee All around the old gadam tree With folded hands they watched noon fade While little Nandalal frolicked and played Katha has thus kept alive living traditions of rural Bengal of yesteryears Through animated visuals Visuals that revive old times for the young Work is often done at home during free time when three generations can sit and stitch and create a work of art. There is no isolation here for the artist, no bondage. The work is often done in groups peppered with local gossip and badinage. Flowers, animals, gods, goddesses, and even Englishmen in Jodhpurs become frozen and sparkling visuals. The Portuguese, when they first came to India, were charmed by the dexterity and simple running stitch. The Satagong quilts they patronized 400 years ago can be seen now only in private collections abroad. Some old Kathas are displayed in museums in India and abroad as well. But, as a folk art form, it flourishes only in Bengal villages. Whether it was the Portuguese Doruka Kathas, where the embroidery was so fine you couldn't tell the right side from the wrong, or whether it was the rich, color-splashed Nakshi Katha or Kolka embellished Sujini, they were a daily part of life, linked close to the family's joys and sorrows, laughter and tears. In Shantiniketan, Rabindranath Tagore 
had wanted women to be independent. He persuaded his daughter-in-law to work with village women. And thus, Kathap came to West Bengal from old Tagore roots in East Bengal. It slowly became a part of the course in Kalabhavan as well. The difference between East Bengal and West Bengal Katha is that the former was more utilitarian. It didn't have any claim as such to art. It was meant to be used as quilts. The latter, however, was embellished and became an art form with the help of the Tagore family. East Bengal Katha is stitched within set patterns. The workmanship is beautiful, but it has no real art. West Bengal Katha is more creative, but it does not have any fixed technique. Suddenly, Kantha has become a craze, and that's really great because fashion designers all over the world are using it and giving it that special attention it has always deserved. In India as well, designers are using it in their work, and that's really encouraging. I have tried to revive Nakshi Kantha, which is the original folk form that gives traditional Kantha that special touch. My models will give you a brief glimpse of the work I'm currently doing. than mere adornment. It is a living, breathing art form like it was centuries ago. Each stitch is a tribute to the village women who work tirelessly towards weaving myth and reality onto their canvas. propagate this art form and to tell the world that the power of Shakti is eternal. A simple stitch on humble cloth reiterates this fact and we are proud because the language of Kantha is universal. talks, it breathes, it lives and becomes a part of our daily life. <laughs> 
like a favorite song or a poem or a romance that's eternal and evergreen.